Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you a really fun technique, one of my favorites when it comes to embossing. I'm going to showcase the technique by using this lovely fall stencil. This is from the latest release by Waffle Flower and it's full of leaves, perfect for the season. However, it would work with any stencil that you'd have at home. For my example today I'm working on watercolor paper, just because I know that distress oxides do blend beautifully on watercolor paper, plus I love the texture and um, that texture for a fall card is perfect I believe, however you can do the exact same technique on a smooth piece of paper. I'm taping the stencil from the back and only on one side, this is really important, you will see why in a bit. I'm using one of my favorite color combos when it comes to fall cards and uh, these are my Distress Oxides in Spiced Marmalade and Crackling Campfire. I'm just randomly applying my two shades of orange there and of course depending on the stencil that you are working with you can throw in the mix even more colors. And let's lift the stencil so you can see what we have up to now. Already gorgeous and you can use that as a background on a card. However, let's take it a step further. I'm going to throw in the color mix, a little bit of dark brown. I'm using ground espresso here and I'm going to add some splashes over the stencil. This way I make sure that they're going to stay directly on top of the leaves. Every time I make a step, I lift the stencil so that I can see what I have up to now. And now this is where I decided that I wanted to throw in a little bit more of that brown. So with a very fine brush, I'm adding a touch of uh, brown on all of these leaves. Just a little bit on one side will do the trick. You will see that when I lift it, it's going to give a completely different look. I think that the beauty of every card is always in the details. And again, I'm going to leave the stencil so you can see what we have up to now. This would work as a background as it is. Just stick a sentiment on top and you have a lovely fall card. But there is always one more step that can take your card to another level. This time I'm going to splashes with gold watercolor. Now these splashes fall only on the opening, so only where the leaves are. I'm going to leave the stencil and hopefully you will see all that shine that I got from those splashes. And now let's clean the stencil without removing it from the paper. My tape works as a hinge so I can easily clean it up without making a mess on my background. It's really important in this step to clean up the stencil since I'm going to move on and work with Versamark ink and I don't want to make any smudges or contaminate my ink pad. And once I'm sure that the stencil is completely clean front and back, it's going to fall exactly where it was in the beginning. And before I move on and do my emboss resist, this is where my mixed media side kicks in. I just wanted to do some stamping through the stencil. So I'm using just a text stamp that I had in my stash. Again, using the same Distress Oxide Brown ink, that's um, ground espresso. And I'm stamping through the openings the text which is going to fall only on some of the leaves. I didn't do a perfect stamping, I just wanted some stamping here and there just for some added interest. Again, you can stop here, it looks stunning. But let's go ahead and do some emboss resist. Now for that you are going to use your Versamark ink, you can either go all over the stencil directly with your ink pad, either you are using the smaller or the bigger one but there is a chance to contaminate your ink pad. If you want to keep it nice and clean, you can use the re-ink. So here I have my Versamark re-ink here and I'm going to apply a little bit of that on the foam of my blending tool. Of course, you don't have to work with Versamark ink. Any embossing ink that you have at home will work for this technique. I'm going to make sure that this is nice and wet and then I will go over all of uh, the leaves everywhere where I have an opening. I can make sure that these are all nice and wet if I lift and tilt it to catch the light. And let's check the foam and see if it was at all contaminated. And the truth is that it stayed quite clean. Now this is where I have covered everything. I'm going to catch the light and hopefully you will see that every area is shiny. This means that I do have Versamark everywhere and it's time to apply clear embossing powder. 
the embossing powder is going to stay only where the leaves are and it's going to block them, it's going to protect them and make them resistible on any other ink blending that I'm going to do later on on top. It's a really fun technique, it gives a color block effect and I absolutely love it. It's so much fun to play with embossing powder after all. The added bonus is that you will end up with shiny leaves which are going to stand up even more. And it's always so satisfying to see the embossing powder melt and uh, turn those leaves shiny. Heat emboss technique was what fascinated me when I started with uh, card making and it never gets old. And I'm going to take a moment here and just appreciate how beautiful it is. I wanted to cover up the background with brown, but I absolutely love it as it is. However, since that was the plan from the beginning, I am going to go ahead and do that. I'm starting with Vintage Photo just to apply a light brown all over the background. I'm going over the leaves, I don't mind if I cover them up. They are going to resist the ink and once I cover it up completely, I can go ahead with a cloth and just wipe them off. Before I move on to a darker shade, I'm going to bring my trimmer and cut it. And this will end up being 4 by 5 and 1 quarter. And then to help those leaves pop even more, I'm going to go all around with an even darker shade of brown. This time I'm using ground espresso. I did go all the way to the edge and added that, left the center a little bit lighter and I'm going to finish it up with some black suit all the way to the edges. The darker the color of the background, the more the color of your design is going to pop. Now I'm going to bring in a clean cloth and I'm going over the leaves, make sure that I remove any excess ink that stayed on top. And here is what I have up to now, absolutely stunning, that embossing ink trapped even those splashes of uh, gold watercolor and it is really stunning in real life. All you have to do with a card like this one is to add a sentiment on top. For that I did use an alphabet die set by Waffle Flower to cut out those long uh, letters and uh, I did cut them out, the outline out of brown cardstock that matches the color of my background and then for the thin letters I did use gold glitter cardstock. I'm sticking one on top of the other, for that I'm using my Burly Art glue just because it has a very fine tip and if it oozes out from behind it's not going to show, it's going to disappear completely. And just because I left a mention, I'm using those fine strips of uh, foam tape at the back. I'm just taking the time to do that or on the back of all the letters so that I can pop them on my card. Now to make sure that these are nicely leveled and lined up, I'm just using a T-ruler. I'm spelling the word fall and to complete my sentiment I did found one of the sticker sentiments by Tim Holtz. This is from a booklet and I'm just going to stick it underneath that says there is always something to be thankful for. I'm finishing off my card by adding uh, a few gems. These are in copper color, but the truth is that this is already a very shiny card and really beautiful in real life, so you really don't have to embellish it even more. I placed this panel on a chocolate brown card base that's four and a quarter by five and a half and you can see here some close-up photos. A post resist is a fun technique and gives amazing results and I hope that this video was fun and that you got inspired to try it out yourself. This video is part of a blog hop as we celebrate the latest release by Waffle Flower. Make sure to visit my blog, you will find the link down below where you can find out how you can win prizes. Thank you all so much for joining me today. You will find a list of everything I used down below. I hope you all have a lovely day and I'll see you all on Tuesday with a new art journal layout.